So I photographed the baby, photographed dad, photographed mum. Mum really did not want to be in the photo at all. But I was like, you know what? You can't go backwards. This is your, 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 your little boy is only going to be a little boy for so long. And I need you in it to also show the size and proportion of your child because I want them to look, I want you to look back and see how small they are. Anyway, we did the family shoots. We did it all done, um, picked up their artwork. So what, baby was newborn, a week to two weeks old, picked the artwork up four to six weeks after. At 10 weeks old, the mum actually dies of an aneurysm. So the baby's literally just born and the mum dies of an aneurysm. Guess whose photos that they had at the, at the uh, funeral. And the only photo that they had that was professional or a decent quality apart from their dodgy iPhone from 2000 and whatever it was, 2007, 2008, was the photos that I took because mum didn't like herself in photos. Gentlemen of the interwebs, it's Yana here. Welcome to episode nine of Yana with Yana. Today we have Mark Rosetto, the photographer's business coach. Now don't let the stigma of coaching get in the way of this one. And yes, I know there is a flood of information in the market at the moment and everyone getting pulled in lots of different directions. But today, Mark and I really separate the signal from the noise. We have a chat about the most comprehensive business coaching out there at the moment and how to have the conversations with your clients about printing their photos and starring in the images. So listen up. How are you, Mark? I'm good, I'm good. Good, good. Today's always a good day. Thursday, Thursday's a good day. After hump day, before Friday, it's all good. <laughs> day of Thor. Yes. 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 All right, Mark. So let's start off. Um, who are you? Where are you from? Tell us. My name's Mark, and I'm from Brisbane, originally from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I am a wedding and portrait photographer who started a business when I was 25. Um, back in, when was it? 2006 and I started a photography business um, photographing portraits and weddings. So I um, started working from home. After working from home, um, sorry, let me go back just slightly. Worked in the UK first um, from 2005 to 2006. 2007 started a business working from home with nothing more than a laptop, a camera, and a backpack and lots of memories. Um, so when we came home, we had virtually kind of nothing. So when I started the studio, um, we started working from home in a kind of garage. Um, that was fun for the first 18 months. We kind of outgrew that space straight away. In our first year, we turned over about $160,000. And then we moved into a commercial space um, straight away um, to, to about 170 square metre old Victorian house in Brighton, Brighton in uh, Victoria. And um, got staff members virtually instantly. And then within about a year, we were photographing about 500 family portraits a year and about 20 weddings a year. Um, and yeah, we did that for about six years, seven, eight years. Um, I sold that business in December, 2015. And then moved to Queensland with my family who are just down in that corner, just there. You can see them slightly. Um, and now um, photography business coach, been doing it for three and a half years now, full time. Um, spoke at WPPI in the States and SWPP in the UK and NZIPP in New Zealand. Um, workshops, training, education, but really specialize in probably more the marketing and the client experience and helping photographers around the world um, kind of demystify all the information out there between podcasts and and online learning and and the webinars like this and people telling you to do this and telling you to do that and if you do it my way this will work and if you do it that way that will work and kind of going well actually no like you can't just do it someone else's way you need to kind of do it your own way because otherwise you're just going to fall into someone else's plan so it's almost like um to mystify all that knowledge and information and create the business that's going to suit you and your personality and your lifestyle. So yeah, that's what, what I advice would you give? There is so much online, especially even I wanted to keep this like COVID agnostic and not even talk about COVID because um, I'm sick of talking about COVID. But there's so much shit. <laughs> there's so much there that everyone's trying to 
trying to pull you in all sorts of directions. And, I'm t- and every- I feel like everyone's just, it's, it's, it's fatigue. What would you say to someone that's feeling the fatigue that actually wants something, but it's getting, you know, pulled in multiple different directions of what, yeah, what that is? Of what do you mean? Of what you should be doing? No, or... no, no, like, um, how to, like, how to separate the noise from the actual signal of what you should be engaging in um, as far as education goes. Um, oh, separate the noise is pretty much, um, I reckon that you've got to listen to people that are walking the talk. Listen to people like, know the stats. Oh, okay. Know your, f- like, don't get caught up in the fluff and know and have a look at what's actually happening. Knowing the stats, knowing the regulations, knowing what's true, what's the, f- what's the uh, facts and what's the fluff. And if you can decipher those two of what you should do and what you shouldn't do, it's going to make life easier. But really, at this stage for COVID-19 for the businesses, um, active marketing probably isn't the best strategy at the moment because people are still in that, you know, do I want to go out? Do I not want to go out? Do we want to shoot? Do we not want to shoot? Families and newborns and the, the weddings, can I book in? Can I not book in? Is it safe to book in? We're still in that holding pattern. So the advice would be to passive marketing, uh, brand awareness. Brand awareness is the main thing. Facebook, social media, Instagram, emails, email marketing, content creation, and being present in your market and um, giving advice and connecting with your clients would be the number one thing I'd be doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because when you're ready to move forward in your business, you've got a warm, um, active um, kind of lead source that you can tap into straight away. Because if you don't do any brand awareness right uh, now, and you've been dormant for two, three, four, six, eight weeks throughout this whole period because you're just working on your business, then when you do come out of your business and you want to launch, you don't know one to launch to. Mm. No one's going to be there because you've been dormant for the last couple of weeks or months. So you can't kind of run a campaign or connect with people that aren't there to be connected with. Mm. So the idea is, and kind of was with the master marketing group and the accountability calls for the last two months, is just stay connected, be consistent. Mm. What is it? Tell me about the master of your marketing course. Master marketing course is a kick-ass course. I think it's really rad. I reckon, like, it's a bit ballsy to say, but I reckon it's the most comprehensive marketing course for photographers in the world. Because what you find is that the master marketing course doesn't just cover one marketing strategy or two marketing strategies. If you do this, the click funnels, this is how you make money. This is how you make a book. This is how you do your family's kind of wanted. This is the family of the month. Like it kind of sets it up so that there's eight individual modules and we want to know the foundations of sales and marketing to set your business up. Then you want to know your stats and your numbers in your particular business so you know where to spend your marketing kind of dollar. Then we teach about how to actually um, get bums on seats with your lead kind of magnets and your gift voucher system and your, your, um, your buy-in. And then we've got like 60 different marketing strategies and out of the 60, 10 of them are the how-to guides, which is literally a step-by-step how to go to market and there's pages of information and videos to watch on how to actually run your campaigns. And then the 12 month kind of marketing plan of how to structure your business over 12 months, you'll end up getting a board that looks just like this. Oh, that's lovely. (laughs) So colorful with our marketing calendar. (laughs) And the reason why this is so important and the reason why people get stressed out is People at hoc will do a Father's Day, a Mother's Day, a Valentine's Day, a Christmas promotion, a mini session, and they're not actually planning it. So it takes away all the stress when your whole year is being planned out. Mm. You just need to uh, STTDP, which is stick to the damn plan. Yeah. <laughs> like, stick to the plan, you'll be fine. That's right. Like, you don't have to make things up. And it's at those at those stages where you do all of a sudden create something because you're scrambling that 
your marketing efforts here crickets because you rushed it. You didn't do it properly. Um, and then what I had to do for the last kind of module, actually there's two. One is I had to set up a closing kind of module because people were getting so many leads, they didn't know what to do with them, which is a really good, op good problem to have. Mm. So I had to teach people how to close a sale on the phone to book them in. Um, and um, yeah, because they were getting all of these leads and I'm like, I don't know what to do with them anymore. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. What do I do with these hundred leads? It's like, well, you've got to get them booked in. How do I do that part? It's like, well, I've done my job and got you the leads. Now you've just got to do yours and call them and book them in. Um, but the reason why I say it's the most comprehensive is we've also got Kylie Garner coming on board as a digital marketing specialist in the course who's going to teach us all about email campaigns, click funnels, uh, social media campaigns, ads manager, Google manager, all that type of digital um, the marketing. So in terms of a photography sales and marketing course, it is definitely probably the most comprehensive. Um, and it's a bit of a choose your, your own adventure. That's what people like about it. If you don't want to blog, then don't blog. Do an expo. If you don't want to do an expo, then write blogs. Do a book if you want to. Yeah. Do a giveaway. Yeah. Do a collaboration. Network with people. Like... There's hundreds of ways to go to market. You just need to find what suits you and your personality and your business and your clients. Yeah. Did you come up with, did you write all of this content yourself? Yeah. Yeah. How did you go know it was going to work? How did you know it was going to work? The, the marketing. Hmm. I've tried it all. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> Being a business, do you know how hard it is to fill? Well, not hard, because I know what I'm doing. 500 family shoots a year. Yeah, right. You can't just do that off one Mother's Day campaign or a, or a sneaky a Valentine's campaign. Mm. That is a well-structured marketing plan. And this is where I've tried virtually nearly, nearly every single strategy that I'm, I'm kind of teaching. Yeah. So I know it's tested, it's proven. Now, the fun part is not only have I tried it, but my coaching clients for the last three and a half uh, years and the other 250 people who are currently in the master marketing call, they've tried it and it works mm. because it's a tried and tested system. You just got to, you know, stick to the damn plan and it'll be absolutely fine. I had someone the other day do a campaign and they booked in a 90 shoots within 12 hours. Wow. 90 shoots. Ridiculous. How do you do that? <laughs> Automated systems, people, acuity scheduling. Thank you very much. Yeah. But they've gone through this whole pre-qualifying strategy. So you're not just getting randoms. You're getting really good quality kind of leads. Mm. Um, so there's, there's a gazillion different ways to go to market. Um, yeah, but feeding a beast of 500 shoots a year, it's a lot of shoots. It's 10 shoots a week at least. Did you have a background in marketing at that point or was it a background in photography or like where, where, where did this come from? Or was it just a, I'm, I'm hungry, I've got to make this work? Yeah, a bit of both. A bit of, <laughs> bit of 25 year old, yeah, 25 year old uh, naive, stupid, stupid Mark as well. Hey, hey, I got an idea. I want to start a studio. Um, now look, it kind of like, um, to kind of go through my work, timeline to give you a background that it doesn't happen overnight so i'll give you a very quick you know a background um to 19 gee that sounds so old now 1997 i joined the cfa cfa which is a country fire authority so yes i was a fireman <laughs> <laughs> now in the in the fire brigade as a 16 year old um, to 21, it was all about systems and procedures. There's a system and procedure for everything and you have to stick to the damn plan. Don't stuff it up. It's for your safety. It's for the efficiency that everyone knows how it works and you stick to what we know because that's the safest scenario for everybody. Then I worked in a bar from 2000, sorry, 1999 to 2003. That's where I learned speed and timing. I learned to multitask. You talk to someone, you pour that drink, you take that money, you do that work, you did it, and then you just learn to, to work hard. Why is that important? Because when you're shooting a wedding for 12 hours, you're on oh, <laughs> for yeah, 12 yeah. hours. <laughs> and it's 
stop. The only time you stop is in the car when you're smashing down a can of Red Bull, you're eating your cheese and bacon rolls you picked up from the bakery on the way there, you're smashing down your red frogs and snakes. Like you learnt, you just learnt to keep your finger on the pulse. 2003 to 2004, um, I worked in the Whit Sundays as an underwater dive photographer taking photos of tourists. So I had a new boat every day. I'd fix the people every day as the tourists. So I learned how to talk to people and photograph people on the fly, Whitehaven Beach, 60 people, I've got an hour and I need to make sure I photograph all the families. And then we did things that we, um, we knew who to photograph. So we looked at this thing called the a manifest of a boat, which tells you the hotel that they're staying at. Right. So you don't pick the backpackers because they're traveling for six months, 12 months, two years. They have no money. They're not going to spend money on photography. But if I go to the Coral Sea Resort and see a family of 10 and I chat with them and they're on a holiday for six days and it's their first family holiday in two years, guess who I'm going to photograph first? The family. Yeah. So that will be who I'll be hunting for at White Haven Beach. So I learned that sales process and then I sold the photos that I took on the boat on the way home. So I developed my own kind of packages and the people that I was working with, which was Tropics Photography, um, they're like, you can't mess with the packages. And I'm like, well, I'm going to. If you want me to sell photos, I'm going to just create my own. So I did. And then I sold hundreds of dollars of photography to tourists every single day. And they were like, how did you do that? I'm like, I just make it irresistible. So I just created the packages ar around there. So one, two, skip a few, go to a uh, London, in London, England. I work for a gym, as you can tell. Um, through my jumper, I worked at a gym. Now the gym was awesome because I learned about sales and the, the marketing. So the Whit Sundays was the one-to-one, -one, person to person sales and marketing. The gym was all about the sales techniques and the marketing systems and on the phone as well. Lots of working on the phone to connect with kind of clients. And we had a very structured phone call scripts that we used to do every single time. We knew our numbers. We had to hit our numbers on a daily basis. Our KPIs were ridiculous. So I really learned the system of that. Then I worked for the London Photography Studio, a London Photography Studio as a... Um, as a design consultant, I sold artwork. That's all I did. I sold artwork eight hours a day, five days a week for eight months. And I was that funny Aussie guy who used to sell lots of artwork with a funny accent. Um, and I just sold artwork every single day. And then, um, so I knew what people brought. I knew what they liked. I knew what they brought. So when we had a photographer come in in the morning, actually we had a family come in in the morning and the photographer didn't, kind of turn up and it was me and the manager and the manager wasn't a photographer at all. And she was like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And I'm like, well, I'll shoot it. She's like, you're not, you're not even the photographer. I'm like, seriously, how hard can it be? I'll just shoot <laughs> the same that I sell every day. I'll just shoot the same stuff. It was one kid and a mum and dad, like, seriously, how hard is it? And it's like, what are you going to do? Turn them away? And she's like, fine. Anyway, I called the photographer and I'm like, hey, um, so how do I set up lights? <laughs> so he told me the camera settings, the lighting, stay in that space, just click the button, you'll be fine. Anyway, I did the shoot. They came back a week later. I sold the artwork. We made 1,800 pounds. Now, 1,800 pounds is a lot in the UK. Mm. Our studio average was 1,000 pounds. Uh, the national average for that business was 800 pounds. So I had smashed it completely. Yeah. So, hey, Shazam, pimped up, photographer. So I photographed like, I don't know, 20, 30 other families. And then I got kicked out of the country because my visa kind of ran out. Mm -hmm. um, so then I worked for, came back to Australia and we were turning over in the UK a million pounds per year. Pounds, that's like 2.4 million Australian. Ridiculous. So remember, I had no idea what the photography industry kind of was in Australia, in Melbourne especially. So I'm sending all my like my the resumes to photography studios, really naive, going, look, 
you know, I'm looking to work for a photography studio. I'm a design consultant. This is what I can do. This is what we turn over. Um, you know, as a studio, you know, I'm looking for a studio that shoots 10 to 15 shoots a week, maybe 20 shoots a week with an average of, you know, 2000 Australian dollars, you know, making a hundred thousand a month. And everyone's like, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. That's not even a thing. So I was really naive. Um, I got this random phone call from a guy called uh, Nick Dionis. And I'm like, well, that's a stupid name. Anyway, Nick Dionis, no idea who he was, but we had a good chat. So I met his little uh, brother, who's Jerry Dionis. And I'm like, never met them, don't know who they are at all. Just no idea. Anyway, went to their studio and I was like, hey, if you want help with portraits, I can help you out. Um, because you guys are wedding photographers and I can help you out in that space. Anyway, cut a long story short, I ended up working for them for four years. Um, then I worked out very quickly who they actually were and I was like, <laughs> um, yeah, do you know all those things that I said that you didn't know what you were doing in the portrait industry? Um, I'm sorry, please don't kill me. Um, anyway, we're good friends still now. But um, I worked for Etsite as a wedding photographer for four years. Um, started Enhanced Studios in 2000 and uh, and sold that in 2015. So in answer to your question, the long version of that is no, it's not an overnight thing that you can just come up with marketing and watch a blog and read a blog and watch a YouTube video and be like, hey, I've got all these marketing strategies off the top of my kind of head. Like this is going back from 1997 until now. What are we, 2020? Like that's 23 uh, years of refining a process. Mm. Um, so I learned a lot in that in that time with the dis different industries and different places. And it's like everyone comes from somewhere. Whether you're an accountant, a bookkeeper, a nurse, um, whatever <laughs> pre-photography life you had, you take that knowledge and information and you turn it and you use it into your business is one of your unique selling points mm. of that is how you, you know, we've got photographers who are newborn photographers who were pediatric nurses. Mm. Now, as a parent who's just had a newborn baby, if I had to choose a photographer, I'd probably choose a pediatric, pe pe pediatric nurse one because they know what they're doing, not the, not the 16, 20 year old who's just started photography, you know, eight months ago. It's that unique selling point, isn't it? Oh, completely. And you just got to amplify that as well. Tell me, um, so you've just, that was an incredible story. Does it matter where you live in the world with this, with no. your strategies? Does it matter? So this, this, no. can work, this works for anyone, anywhere, any culture, any, anywhere around the world. It's pretty easy. Let me summarize it for you to, to prove that it works for anyone. Take good photos, educate your clients, and be a nice person with great customer service and don't be a dick. <laughs> In a nutshell, like just if you're a good photographer that takes solid photography, you actually like people, like you actually want to talk to people and you actually like people and having conversations and you give a great quality customer service, like it works anywhere in the world, anywhere. And I, I work with photographers all across Australia, all across the UK and America and in Europe as well. It works everywhere. Like it's one of those things that people just be a nice person and have a product and show some value and um, style about what you do. Mm -hmm. And the marketing strategies work because you don't have to be sneaky. You don't have to be, be transparent, be open, be honest, just connect with your people. You don't have to trick people into, to booking kind of, to booking you. Don't, don't trick. Like, you know, I, I, I say a few times surprises are for birthday parties. Like you don't want to be like, Hey, come on in on this and oh, and now buy this and it's going to cost you this much. That's just not, that's not being, that's not being a cool person at all. That's, that's, that's not cool. Yeah. No one likes that. I think there was a time and a place where they, you know, the locking someone in a room and saying, 
oh, you know, if terrible. you buy them, I'm going to rip them up. And then there was a stage, but you can't do that shit anymore. I mean, and I don't no. think you should have ever done it. I don't think it should ever have been a thing, but very much not these days. Like it's, it's, it's not fair. No, you'd be, yeah. And with the social media and reviews, you'd be crucified. Imagine if we, you know, I probably heard of people doing that up until about maybe five years ago. Mm. And it's only recently just stopped with the locking the door and be like, hey, if you don't buy these, you know, whatever you don't order today, we're just going to delete. So if you want it, buy it now. If you don't, then they'll be gone forever. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, I I found it interesting, you know, over the many of a hard drive the wall down here. And there's been times that people have caught, and, and sorry, it's going to go a little bit dark now, where people have lost, and I think I went through a, 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 about, it was about a three month period, and I had three, three deaths of people, and yeah. people contacting me, do you have any photos? Um, and it was years. And years and years ago. Yeah. How do you um? How do you have a conversation with? How do you say to people? <laughs> without saying to people, everyone's going to die if you don't have a profession. You know, like you don't want to come across as that. But it is. I don't think you're. You can't be a photographer for, uh, you know, for a certain amount of time without coming into contact with some sort of grief of someone reaching out and asking whether you've got something. How do you how do you give that put that message across beforehand without sounding doom and gloom? Yeah, totally. It's one of those things where you just got to like we have, our our studio was a family portrait studio, so that's not child and dad or child and mum. If you had a mum and dad, it was a child with mum and dad. And I don't care if you need to lose weight and I don't care if you're busy at kind of work. We were a family portrait studio. So we will take the time to photograph you as a family. So we would always photograph the family, kids with mum, kids with dad, kids individually and mum and dad together the whole time. Without saying it, this is just what we say. Because do you know what? You can't go backwards. Your kids are going to look back at your albums on the wall going, I love the photos of me, but you were never in them. Why is that? Mm. Oh, because I just didn't like myself. I didn't, you know, and if you're a good enough photographer, you should be able to shave like five, 10 kilos off people like that. <laughs> good lighting, you know, good lighting and good posing. You should be able to hide virtually everything or anything and tell your clients not to wear sleeveless singlets. It's just, if they're big people, it's just not cool at all. Yeah. Um, cause you can't, some things you just can't hide. <laughs> you need material and clothing for that. Um, but yeah, and look, I'll tell you a story. It's a bit kind of dark at the same time, but this is exactly what happened. So probably we're going back 2008 now, cause this kid is now, he was a family friend. So this kid's now 13. What, what year are we in? Anyway, the kid's 13. So just think how long ago it was. Did the newborn shoot. It was a family friend of ours. We did the newborn shoot of the baby and the parents were like, no, nah, we don't really need us in the photo. And I'm like, no, you do. Like, we're, we're going to do it anyway. You can't go backwards. So I photographed the baby, photographed dad, photographed mum. Mum really did not want to be in the photo at all. But I was like, you know what? You can't go backwards. This is your, 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 your little boy is only going to be a little boy for so long. And I need you in it to also show the size and proportion of your child because I want them to look, I want you to look back and see how small they are. Anyway, we did the family shoot. We did it all done, um, picked up their artwork. So what, baby was newborn, a week to two the weeks old, picked the artwork up four to six weeks after. At 10 weeks old, the mum actually dies of an aneurysm. So the baby's literally just born and the mum dies of an aneurysm. Guess whose photos that they had at, their, at the uh, funeral? And the only photo that they had that was professional or a decent quality apart from their dodgy iPhone from 2000 and whatever it was, 2007, 2008, was the photos that I took because mum didn't like herself in photos she was a fit mum she was a dietitian she was a she was a, a she was a nice 
there's nothing wrong. <laughs> she was a nice, fit, healthy dietitian kind of mum. Um, yeah, she passed away of an aneurysm overnight, just like that. And we had that phone call where I get a phone call from the friend or cousin who is like, hey, just letting you know, this is what's happened. Do you have any photos of them? And I'm like, yes, I do have them all. And that print that's behind your head, we printed a photo of that. Um, and that's a photo that they walked down the aisle with the funeral, with the coffin and stuff for. And that was a photo that they put on the coffin as well. So I tell that story sometimes to clients who are adamant they do not want family photos. And I'm like, hey, not to scare you or doom and gloom you and be like, hey, you're going to die. But just letting you know, like, shit happens to the best of us. And if you're out of your photos because you don't feel like it, that's not a good enough excuse. So with our studio, it was a family portrait studio. And whether you wanted to be in the photo or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you, it doesn't mean you have to buy it in the slightest. The one thing is we're already there. Let's not go backwards. Take the time. Take the photo. You don't have to buy them. Just be in two or three. If anything, make the child comfortable that you're with. Because if you send your two or three or four-year-old to a stranger who's got a camera, who go, hey, smile, the kid's going to be like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and be like, back up, mister. And it's going to be uncomfortable. So start with the family photos to make them comfortable. And the kids know it's okay to play. When the kid knows it's okay to play, you're going to get much better photos anyway. Mm. So do yourself a favour. Get your families in photos. Yes. It's almost like your responsibility, isn't it, as a photographer yeah. to make sure that happens. Yeah. It's really important that we, this is what we do and why we do it. And like you said, everyone's going to get that phone call at some stage. And it's the worst when it's either a child or a new mum or dad or a car accident or something. Um, you know, I've probably had that phone call, I don't know, six to 10 times in the last however many kind of years. If you're a photographer, it's bound to happen. Yeah. Bound to happen. Even the wedding industry, you'll have photos of, do you have any photos of my grandma? She passed away. Mm -hmm. Or that photo of, you know, that uncle or auntie or something. Like it's bound to happen. Yeah. So it's our job to capture it and keep it. And don't delete people's photos. Don't be a dick. No, don't be a dick. That's a dick move. Oh, just put on a hard drive. I've got photos of, oh, it's like every wedding I ever photographed. And the old studio has got backups of every shoot we've ever done, ever, ever. If I, ne if I ever needed to find anything, I know within about five minutes I'll be able to find everything. So, yeah. yeah. What, about, what about printing? How do you have that conversation with people, you know, with the whole, I just want people don't want they just want the digital files or you know how do you, how do you recommend that people have that that conversation to 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 encourage them to preserve the memories of print probably start with the end in mind and start with it on the website your yeah. product product videos room views on the website photos of products social media photos with people holding products like like show people products start with that end in mind like be very kind of vocal at the very start that that you know oh, keeping memories and you know i'm not the best with words when it comes to writing and stuff but i'm sure you can write it in a way that it's like you know um you know something it, it's it's not real like, like that whole campaign it's not real unless it's kind of printed mm. um you know and and tell people the reason why product is so important as well. Why, why, why is it that it's so important? I guess it's one of those things that prints will never die. Like you'll always hold on to them. The wall art on their home and building self-esteem for your kids and seeing themselves. Like our daughter, I don't have it here because I don't have it. We've got like a wedding album, like a small wedding, like a parent album from the old school chunky parent album. She took it to, to, to school for show and tell. <laughs> because she's like, look at my mum and dad. They were so young. Um, <laughs> and she it. We ended up getting, um, we, we did the whole thing on iPhoto when you make your own kind of book and you print it for 20 bucks. Well, we have to print three copies. One for us, which is the real one, and then two smaller ones because the kids just love 
looking at themselves. I'm not sure where they get that from, whether it's me or Sue's, but the kids just love looking at themselves. That's so interesting, isn't it? That self-esteem thing, kids looking at themselves and that whole identity thing. I'm sure there's been some research that's been done around that. Um, I'm sure there would be. Yeah. Certainly there would be. But it's like people, people love to get something kind of tactile. Like, you know, probably up until maybe from five, wait, what would I be, 2020? Probably from 2000 and 2013 to from 2003 where, where the digital age came about, everything was digital file, digital file, digital file, kind of digital file. Then you've got 10 years of generation of where people are like, I haven't printed anything, I don't have a photo of anything, I don't print any, I've, and they kind of start looking at stuff. And all of a sudden from 2000, I reckon 2013, 2014, 2015 until now, people are loving, they love to get prints in their album. They love the wall art, they love the product because our suppliers all around Australia and our suppliers in the UK and America, they produce amazing, amazing albums and artwork and torn edge and box canvas and they're innovative. In innovative. innovative. Anyway, their products are awesome and they last forever. Like, and I wish I was at home because I actually have a photo of my wife's grandma, because we're staying at my grandma's house at the moment, that they photographed in um, uh, 1942. And it's a their wedding photo. And it's like, people hold on to that forever. You can't find that in a hard drive. No. And plus, at my, at my grandma's house, her house is full of family photos. Now, mind you, she's got, she was, um, she had, how many kids? Seven kids. Oh. Her house, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the war times of 1950. Uh, her house is full of family photos. And we've all kept them up because she's not kind of living there in, at the moment. She's in a home. Um, we're only staying there temporary as well, so we don't want to just change everything. But we love seeing all the old family photos. These photos of my wife when she's a kid, like everywhere. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Like my daughter thinks it's hilarious looking at my wife at her mum's photo when she was like 10. Mm -hmm. She's like, you look like me. And I'm like, yes, aren't, aren't you beautiful? That's what you're going to turn out like. because <laughs> <laughs> you're related. Oh, jeez. Well, I could chat yeah. you all day, um, but we're going to have to wrap it up at some yeah. point. So um, it might be dead. We can, uh, I'm going to send a link out to all our wonderful community of photographers so they can catch on about the Master of Marketing. Um, and then I'm going to probably split it into a couple of blogs as well with, you know, just what we talked about and, you know, how to have that conversation, which is a bit of an awkward conversation as well. So um, thank you very much for, for joining us. Thanks and for the yarn, Yana. Always love a yarn, don't I? Love a yarn. <laughs> Go on bananas. Just like a earring. That's it. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Say bye. bye.